found on page 254.
if you would, let us turn to the uh, other side of our uh, bulletin insert to our uh, prayer list side. And would there be joys or concerns that we'd like to share this morning or updates on ones who are on our prayer list? Pray, Lord, for those who defend our freedoms. 
We ask, Lord, that you will hold those who are in the military in your hands, that you will surround them with your shield and strength and protection, and that you will help them, Lord, to carry out the many difficult tasks that they are called to perform. And we ask, Lord, that you would bring them home safely to us. We also pray, Lord, for those who do not come home safely. To those who are injured, we ask that you would give your healing both in body and in spirit, and that you would allow them to return to the lives and loved ones that they have left behind. And to those who do not come home, Lord, we ask that you will pour your comfort, your grace, and your peace out upon their loved ones. Hold them in your hands in such a way that they know that they and those they love are being held by you. Be with them, Lord. Comfort and keep them. We pray also, Lord, for those who are in the nursing homes, and we ask, Lord, that you will pour your comfort, your blessings, and your peace out upon them, too, that you will make their days good, and that you will fill their hearts with your joy, your laughter, and your happiness. We pray, Lord, also for those who take care of them and those who visit them, that you will do the same for them, and that they will have your blessings, your love, and your hope in such a way that those they care for and visit and share with will have blessed lives and their halls will be filled with your joy and your love. Hold them in your hands. We pray also, Lord, for our church, both here in McClure and our church's place or in our community. We ask, Lord, that you will help us to be your hands and feet, that you will help us to show your love to those around us in this coming year in such a way that they feel your love and presence in their lives. We pray, Lord, for this community, that you will help it to be that beaming, glorious place that you have called it to be, and that you will help us to be able to give your joy to those around us. We pray also, Lord, for the church at large. We ask that you will especially be with our United Methodist Church, that you will be with our leaders, that you will be with all those ones who do things and say things and help us all to be in your love, in your grace, and in your blessings, and especially in your purpose and in your mission. Hold us in your hands and in your love. And we pray these things in your Son Jesus' holy name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power glory forever. Amen. Responsive, re responsive reading can be found in the hymnal on page 818. It continues on page 19. responsibly. We'll sing to the Lord a new song, for the Lord has done marvelous things. God's right hand and holy arm have gotten the victory. Chapter 2, verse 1. 
verses 1 through 12. These verses are entitled, The Visit of the Wise Men. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard, heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes and the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. May God grant his understanding to his word. Herod was troubled in all of Jerusalem with him. That's the way the news does to us, isn't it? Gets us all riled up and worked up, just like in Herod's day, when the people of Jerusalem heard that there were these guys coming saying, hey, there was a king that was born, and everybody knew Herod did not have a new child. Had Herod, had, Herod had not had a new child. Herod's children had not even had any new children in the last couple of years. So that everybody knew that when Herod gets upset, well, Herod was a tyrant, just like today's, you know, butchers, kings, strong men, tyrants, just like today. And just like today, the news likes to rile people up. How many people saw, uh, read in, uh, what was it, yesterday's Crescent News about the United Methodist Church? Anybody? I don't know if it was in the Northwest Signal, because I didn't get my Northwest Signal yesterday. For some reason, it was apparently late to the post office, and it didn't get delivered. Hopefully, y'all see it tomorrow. It was on Fox News. And it was on Fox News, and it's been on all over the places. In case you are in the dark, we are still arguing over human sexuality. And they have apparently decided that we are at an impasse over it. And that we cannot exist as a church in the state that we are now. Because we are not able to coexist as one church. It's a struggle, isn't it? It's a struggle. How would you like to feel every day of your life that others have been telling you that what you are, how you identify yourself, how you live, is an abomination to God? It would be like that. We wouldn't like that, would we? You know, if you're an adulterer, Bingo. Okay. I just want you to know it's not just whether you're gay, whether you're bisexual, whether you're transgender. Let's see, what is it? LBG. I don't know what the alphabet soup is that they identify as, and I'm sorry if I'm not politically correct. I will never be, I never have been, okay? And I'm sorry if that offends people. 
Um, our church is in an interesting place. The news has reported it like we have decided to split, that the conservatives have formed a new denomination called the Wesleyan Covenant Association, and that they have already started pulling other churches away to them in this and that. Our discipline states and has not been changed that everything that is in this building, all the property, all the hymnals, all the pews, all the wall decorations, all belong to the United Methodist Church. Every United Methodist Church. Whether it's a United Methodist Church in California, whether it's a United Methodist Church in Canada, or New Mexico, or Africa, or Asia, name a place, the United Methodist Church is there, and we all hold all of our things in trust. You can go into any United Methodist Church and ask for any United Methodist services that any United Methodist Church will offer and be given them. You will be given sanctuary in any United Methodist Church around the world. If you ever find yourself traveling the world and you find things happening and going into chaos and descending into anarchy, find the United Methodist Church. Because you will find sanctuary, you will find help, you will even find trouble in chaotic times. And that's what the United Methodist Church is. It's a wonderful thing in my opinion. You guys have heard me say over and over and over, name a disaster, we beat the Red Cross. Name a medical emergency, we beat everyone to it. World Health Organization asks our people on the ground what the trouble is. They don't inform our people, they ask. It's an amazing thing. It's a wonderful thing. It is being Christ's hands and feet to a world that is living in chaos. And sadly, our church has been in chaos, and this seems to be the only thing that anybody wants to talk to them about. They don't want to talk to us about our mission. And the mission of the West Ohio Conference, of which we're a part of, is to make disciples for Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. We have a mission. We, our friends and members of McClure United Methodist Church, our community gathered in response to Christ to live in a Christian relationship with one another, our neighbors, and the world. We are committed to creating an accepting, caring, affirming, and reconciling environment which empowers persons to follow Christ. I get an amen there? Amen. amen. That is our purpose. To create a place where every person in our community can follow God, where every person in our community can feel God's love and be a part of a fellowship that will support them, pray for them, and care for them. How lost would you be without that? I know how lost I would be. My world would be horrible. It would be chaotic, it would be 